giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. How's it shaking, everyone? Welcome back to First Updates Now Nor'easter Region Recap, and welcome to our second of three shallow dives across the country tonight. We're going in detail with the upper echelon of our regions and bring it to you, bring it to you here live. And I'm reporting for First Updates Now. I'm Audrey. I'm Kevin. And joining us here today, we have Connor and Chris from Perennial New York Powerhouse here with us to shake things up. It's 2791 Shaker Robotics. They're here to talk about their season, and we've got them with us today if you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit more and what you do for the team. Connor? All right, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I'm Chris. I'm the lead mechanic on our team, and I'm a third-year student. All right. Okay. I think I'm back. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Connor. I'm a fourth year student on 2791 and I'm the head of strategy. All right, it's great to have you on the show tonight. So the way we're gonna go through this is we're going to ask you to elaborate on some general questions about your build and this season. And then after we run through a few of those, we'll pull some of our questions from the chat. So chat, line those questions up and we'll get to them at the end. So Shaker, you guys haven't really put out anything about your robot into the community yet. So do you wanna first Walk us through your robot for the first time here. Give us a rundown on what your machine does and how your build season went this year. Uh, sure. So our robot this year ended up being a bit different than we first anticipated it would look. Um, <laughs> it's broken down into five main subsystems. It's got uh, the hopper, the shooter, the climber, the intake, and the drivetrain. Um, we ended up going with a linear hopper when initially, um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the video that the Rembrandts put out with the rotary hopper. Uh, we initially started trying to kind of have that sort of a design and shifted gears partway through. Um, our linear hopper can hold five balls and it uses timing belt to move them through up to the shooter at the top. We have six inch Colsons that actually act as the flywheel to launch the power cells. And we have a hood that's primarily made out of sheet metal. Our whole drivetrain is made out of aluminum box tube um, so is most of the superstructure that holds up a lot of the climber. And we use gussets with rivets to hold most of that stuff together. Um, we ended up going with a four Neo drivetrain this year, two on each side. And it's geared to about um, seven to one. So it's around 12 feet per second um, adjusted when it's on the ground driving. We had a mechanism to control the control panel. It uses compliant wheels to actually just drive up and start spinning the wheel when you were partly under the trench. Um, which brings me to our height, we're a short bot, so we can fit under the trench. Um, the plan was not really to go for the long shot, but um, we were tuning to see if we could partway through. And our climber um, essentially just unhooks kind of like a, with a hinging motion to go up and grab the bar, and it has a single hook that can uh, pull itself, it can use to pull itself up with a winch. Yeah, that's awesome. And absolutely awesome animation. This thing's incredible. Um, really good overview of the robot. Connor, do you have anything to add to that? Um, not too much. I'm not really <laughs> into the of the robot. Right. Well, maybe what was the general strategy that you guys were going for with the robot? Like, where did you aim for on the field? Um, so yeah, our primary goal was to be able to adapt to like any alliance composition going into the season and being short allowed us to work with either a short bot or a tall bot. And our plan going in was mostly yes to prioritize trend cycles or act as a sweeper with missed balls or stealing from the opponent's um, loading zone and then being able to reliably climb and get the RP with a 
pretty big thing for us. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. What are you guys Something planning I've... to do? Go oh, ahead. Sorry. Something I forgot to mention with the robot is our intake. Um, probably one of the most important parts. We ended up using those 3D printed vector wheels to try and center the game pieces into the linear hopper. Because mm -hmm. our hopper ended up being the center. Nice, nice. What are you guys planning to do for the rest of your season? Uh, what do you have off-season projects planned? What's going on? Um, so yeah, currently um, the team is taking more or less a well-deserved break from robotics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but going forward, we're probably going to work on some new materials for next season, um, preparing some um, rookies and um, underclassmen. Um, and then we're also doing a competition with one yeah. of the um, FRC simulators. Um, just to have some fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So hopping back a little bit, um, after build season, you guys uh, switched events a few times and had it canceled on you. And just talk us through your uh, kind of shortened competition season here. So yeah, um, it was definitely difficult having three events canceled on you. Um, and yeah, as soon as we saw both our events were canceled, um, the mentors started working really hard to get us into Finger Lakes, um, mm -hmm. really optimistic going in. Um, and when we got there, it was really cool seeing all the other robots, but, um, unfortunately it was canceled. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah how did that impact how you were practicing, uh, at the practice field? Um, so once we had the first two events canceled, um, we started going really hard to get our robot ready for Finger Lakes, um, which we had to leave before we would usually even leave for Tech Valley. Um, so we were practicing every day for several hours and trying to get as much auto work and, um, dry practice as possible. Um, and we were coming in pretty good. Um, we had everything working as we, mostly working as we expected. Yeah. What yeah, auto modes a lot of, did you guys... Oh, sorry. sorry again. <laughs> um, it, it was a lot of moving back and forth to get parts on the robot before you know we had to leave and stuff. It was a bit of a rush, like Hunter said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like Blue Destruction said, duct tape bumpers, I like it. I like it too. <laughs> what, uh, what auto modes did you guys have uh, working? What did you have planned? Um, so... As our hood fires in the opposite direction that we intake, um, our goal for our second regional was to get a um, to shoot three, drive back, get three, and then shoot three. So for a six ball auto, um, going into Finger Lakes as we kind of ran out of time, um, we put together a three ball auto. It's our initiation line. Um, yeah, we it was we were kind of scrambling a bit there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. That's insane to have events canceled on you and having to leave early writing auto in the hotel room Woo. <laughs> Ooh, yeah <laughs> so i've seen you guys we've we've all seen you guys grow from a solid contender in upstate new york into a really dominant force uh so what do you guys think was the biggest factor that changed shaker into an einstein level team um, so probably the largest factor, in my opinion, was probably um, the addition of um, a few really critical mentors who joined the team in 2016. Um, and they really pushed forward some critical areas of our team and really helped us. Um, and then the they were hand. very good at teaching their students. So they output some really um, powerful students on the team and then um, was able to push us forward and give us a lot of um, acceleration into yeah, being dominant, I guess. What areas specifically uh, did they help you guys out in? So, yeah, we had three key um, college mentors in strategy and scouting, um, mechanical and design, and then programming. Mm. Uh, yeah, you got that all covered, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Mm. So guys, we're seeing a, a video here from uh, 2019. I want to ask the both of you, uh, looking back at, at this year's robot and previous ones, which one was your favorite that you had throughout your uh, your career on uh, Shaker Robotics, and uh, why why do you feel that was your favorite robot? 
Um, so my personal favorite was Titan from 2019. Um, probably because um, I, I'm a big fan of 2019, the strategy end of it. Um, but also, um, it was the best one. <laughs> uh, I would say my favorite is Titan as well. Um, partly because um, that year I really dove into like learning how to design robots and I partially worked on a lot of the design behind the robot um, and I was behind the mechanical aspect of, um, of it as well and under my mentors that year particularly I learned a lot so there's a lot of memories attached to that bot. How do you feel that your 2020 robot would have measured up to some of your 2019 and 2018 robots? Um, I think it would have been comparable to like 2018, 2017. I think it was hard for us to top our 2019 levels of success, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially with um, those three mentors I mentioned earlier. All of them um, graduated from RPI, so we didn't have. Oh no! <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, um, I think it's probably around our 2018, 2017 level. How did you guys try to fill that gap once your mentors had graduated to still perform on that same level? Um, uh, a lot of the um, students um, stepped up a lot to fill their voids and um, prioritize teaching students. And yeah. Yeah, we really worked on a system of trying to teach our students as best we could so that we could have a head start in the season. Nice. And that's going to translate into this season with uh, all the training in 2020, right? Yeah, hopefully. Nice. What's your favorite? mechanism favorite little detail on the 2020 robot that you want to talk about um i would probably have to say the hopper just because there's so much like that went into actually making it what it what the final um, version was because we went through a lot of iterations uh, like i said earlier we originally tried a rotary hopper and when we realized that we couldn't get that to work in the way that we wanted to and with the resources we had, uh, we really had to kind of dramatically shift gears in our design. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, uh, we ended up going com like completely in the opposite direction we thought we were going to be going in, uh, changing to a linear hopper that sat like right in the middle of our robot. And it caused us to have to move around a ton of subsystems. Um, it was a lot of prototyping. We had at least like four prototypes um, of like that were very um, high caliber to represent that system and how it would behave. And we ended up changing it a lot, but I think um, with how much work we put into it, it came really far. And we got it to work uh, pretty well, despite um, not expecting to need to push it as far as it needed to be pushed. Nice. And did you guys get to that because of, I guess the question here is how much time did that take? And did you feel able to do that because of the no bag roll this year? Oh, it took tons of time. Um, we definitely <laughs> would not have been able to do it with the no bag roll, or at least it would have been extremely challenging. Um, you know, we, we were looking at that rotary hopper from, I want to say almost from like day one of the season up until um, we had to say, oh no, we're like three weeks from a competition and we have no robot built. Oh wow! So wow. We, yeah. we really just we really just had to like <laughs> shift gears, but it it really just took a lot of um, looking at our design, reevaluating, and we really had to make a lot of critical decisions. Like, what is the smart move here? Because we are not quite where we want to be, and we need to change this big system. So it 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 took a lot. Definitely, it took a lot more time than we needed to. I would say we spent like almost our whole season, no, if not literally our whole season, tuning that hopper, and getting it to where we want it to be. But I would say we got it really working well at the in the yeah. end. Um, so for context, that was until about week five of build season yeah. that you guys were doing the spin nexer. That's insane. <laughs> How did that impact your like CAD time and your other prototypes? Can you go into more detail on that? Um, it really impacted our prototypes in the sense that we, because we, we have a, a CNC router at our school. So we can make really high caliber nice. prototypes, but they take a while to like program the router and stuff. It's like actually get it produced. So we spend a lot of time making the prototypes and then to only find out, oh, this doesn't really work too well. Now we need to pump out a bunch of other prototypes for this new system um, really had, um, had us pumping the gas on our cat. 
Um, and wow. like the day we decided, cause literally like the day before we were like, yes, this is the day we are either going to go with this existing system or change. Um, we really like put in a last dish effort to try and get this rotary design to work. Um, we, have a... we decided that it was the best thing to do for our resources to switch over. And it was crazy just kind of really working on the CAD for so long just to, you know, catch up to where we wanted to be. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want, we're going to start pulling questions from chat. We're going to switch gears over to that. So, Kevin, do you want to start us out with our first one? Sure. If you guys were going to build this robot from scratch, with all the lessons you've learned from this season, from watching events, from building, what would you have done differently? This is from Struck by the Bell in the chat. I would say that we definitely would have considered a tall bot a bit more. I think <laughs> I think we might have considered it a bit more just because with our resources at the time, um, we certainly would have found it a bit easier. I know um, Josh and Connor uh, can elaborate on this a bit more than I can, but I know that later on the strategy of going short um, didn't end up being as important as we initially uh, really thought it was in the beginning of the season. In the beginning of the season, we were kind of really on going short just for the advantage of going through the trench, but we really reconsidered that later on. Um, and I, th I think we would have definitely not not done the spindexer for the hopper. Mm. We would have probably gone right to um, a linear system, probably one that was a bit bigger because we did have, we a lot of our tuning of the hopper was trying to get all five balls to fit into it properly. So we would have made the hopper larger and we would have done a different climber because our telescopic, or no, we would have done a telescopic climber because our current climber is like a really relatively complicated uh, hinging arm that it essentially is locked down and then it, um, you pull out a pin and using gas jocks, it springs up, grabs the bar and just kind of does a pull up almost. It's like an arm sort of a shape. And that ended up being super complicated. It was heavier than it needed to be. Um, and we, it actually was kind of slow. So we certainly would have gone with the different climb design. If the season progressed, do you think you would have changed the climber? Um, yes, def I mean, definitely in between our first regional and champs, if we were to go to champs, we would have uh, looked at changing the climber before we changed um, anything All right. else on the bot. Uh, next climber, uh, er, next question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, from N. Matthias, forty-one thirty. How much does the freshman that did all the cat animation charge? He <laughs> um, didn't charge us anything. Um, I can't speak beyond that. Um, I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> from no, it's a really exalted cool one. From exalted one in the chat. How do you guys train your drive team? Um, so probably it's just a lot of repetition and doing full matches basically we tend not to keep to repetitive um cycle practices as much as we do just simulate matches over and over again so the driver both gets used to like the different aspects of the match while also um, getting used to kind of remembering how long the match is in a sense um such that they like know they can act kind of independently and um, know what point of the match they are without being told it to a point Gotcha. All right, let's hit some rapid fire questions now. We've got one from Akon5511. What's the most risky strat decision you've made? Um, probably at 2019 champs, uh, I can't remember the match number. Um, we ran <laughs> defense, counter defense. Um, um, we, we, yeah, we ran ca defense, counter defense, and only us on offense, and we won that match. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, from Deal With It 27, we have what made you guys choose the drive base that you did? Um, I would say just um, experience with drive bases in the past. Uh, we normally go West Coast, um, and typically we do belt. We haven't done a lot of chain um, in the past, so it was just kind of uh, what, what we knew would work out well for us. Um, we had done an eight-wheel drive in 2016, and the eight-wheel aspect of it uh, 
wasn't we had a few problems with that drivetrain, but the eight wheels aspect um, was not one of those problems. So we thought it was a solid <laughs> choice to go uh, west coast with five inch Colson. All right. I'm going to group our next two questions together from No Mythical Beast and BMAR 1257. Who's your favorite strap mentor and which 2791 mentor has the best beard? Um, probably <laughs> both answers. Um, Brian Marr. <laughs> Oh, wow. I wouldn't one have guessed that my... one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, what was different about the way that the season played out, uh, strategy played out, than what you guys thought it was going to be on kickoff weekend? Um, so on kickoff weekend, um, I think we probably overestimated um, being short, as Chris mentioned earlier. But also um, some of the team, including myself, probably overestimated the value of buddy climbing, um, which was a thought we pursued, not into like the physical components aspect, but um, something we probably spent too much time thinking about. Gotcha. Okay, another chat question from RCAP51. What plans for scouting did 2791 have for 2020? Um, for scouting, um, we plan to run 18 person scouting. So we have 18 people scouting that's the match. so many. <laughs> In one um, map? Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's 18 objective scouts, and we're running a few more subjective scouts. Um, we plan to have three people scouting each robot, and then we take the median of the data points extrapolated from that, and then um, incorporate some subjective note-taking in there. Um, and this is all done on paper, not through an <laughs> app. So we have six data entry people who enter the paper into an Excel spreadsheet. Why? That's so um, many. Um, it increases the um, accuracy of the data in the end, but it's also fun. That's four <laughs> scouts that my it team had fun. at people fun. at competition. <laughs> okay. And we have what's going to be our last question from chat. Uh, we have Barona, good day, 2338. Uh, what is your most memorable match uh, on your time on 2791? Um. I'd probably say our third semifinal match this year. Um, well, 2019, actually. But, um, yeah, this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, it's not necessarily my favorite, but it's um, definitely the most memorable because we lost our tiebreaker semifinals match on a, tie, on a tiebreaker. Um, uh, so that wasn't fun, but most memorable. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> I would honestly have to agree with Connor on that one, partially because I was uh, the, I, I was the technician that match, so I was really up close seeing because um, there there was some defense, um, and it, it was kind of hard to watch, but it, it it was definitely the most memorable, like you said, not not pleasant but memorable. I'll say one of my favorite 2791 matches was the uh, IRI mentor match finals in uh, 2018. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Inflatable couch. All right. So new, before we end, we have a shout out reward redeemed by RCAP51. And he said, yes, pulls Mario. Plays. Yes, plays Mario. Yeehaw. <laughs> <sighs> so that'll be all we have for you tonight from the Northeast. Thanks. Thanks for hanging with us. And thanks so much for 2791 Shaker Robotics. Fun is once again asking you for your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please, consider giving us a little bit of your support as a treat. You can join Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash first updates now, or really just letting people know that this is the place uh, to get fun information that you need. Check us out on Discord, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and even here live on Twitch and our videos on YouTube. And on behalf of myself, Kevin, our producer, Tyler, Chris and Connor here today. I would like to thank you all for tuning in and thank you to all our mods in chat. And our next show is going to be the Infimidation Shallow Dive with 67, the hot team. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be back in two weeks on the Nor'easter Region Recap. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.